Yeah, good morning, dear students. This is M. Ochaya, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Radhikavi Nanaya University, Amazon Campus, Kathmandu. Let me introduce literary criticism. Literary criticism is the study, interpretation, and evaluation of literary text. In the literary text, we are going to study in detail, not as a layman, but a fine man. And uh, we evaluate the uh, literary work, that is assessment or estimation of a literary work, or we can say the judgment of the merits and demerits of a literary work and of the author of that literary text. And even we are going to interpret uh, the literary text in our own words, having some uh, theoretical framework in our mind. And the literary text can be ensured in two ways. It can be studied by a layman and be ensured that general audience uh, may enjoy the movie, watch the movie, and they come up with uh, some satisfaction or a dissatisfaction of that movie. That is one way. And another way, it can also be studied uh, by the trained man methodo methodically. So, the latter, the latter way of study is called critical study of literary text. Of course, any form of art can be assessed critically. If it is the case of literary text, we call it literary criticism. The word literary criticism derives from a Greek word, tribes, which equal word, which is equivalent to this literary, uh, this criticism is Critic, C R I T I Q U E, critic. So criticism is a judgment of judgment and a um, judgment of uh, the or we can say criticism is the act of judging and a literary criticism is the act of judging the literary text. Criticism, the uh, etymological and a literary criticism is the act of judging literary text. So, literary critic is a man who judges the merits and demerits of a literary text. A critic is an ideal reader. A critic is an ideal reader. Critic never, criticism never takes a writer or his work trust. So, we should, uh, we should, even when we criticize something, we should never take a writer or his work on the trust. It interrogates and freely inquires the merits and demerits of the literary text. This approach is disinterested investigation of its subject. To understand and interpret it fully. So, there should be no favoritism, that means we should not be favor of a particular author. Okay, when we have such favoritism or such a favor towards a particular author or his work, then we can't judge properly. That's why its approach is a scientific, that is a disinterested investigation disinterested that's why in the earlier point we did we uh, men, I mentioned that uh, a, a criticism never takes a writer or his work on trust okay so it is a disinterested investigation of its subject what is subject the target book or the target literary text or the target literary order concern. That is the subject of the trick. So, it, a disinterested investigation, it involves investigation of its subject to understand and interpret it fully. So, understanding that is uh, not simply knowing. Knowing means getting some information. Understanding means uh, even we should know in depth 
of that particular topic and we should be able to apply that point in another context. That is understanding. So, when we read a literary text critically, we should understand and interpret it fully. So, the fact is that no fixed principle of principles of criticism to be applied indiscriminately to the works of all ages and all writers. Okay, that means that we can't fix a particular set of principles to analyze a literary text. Those principles, we can't fix those principles for all the ages and all the times. Because the principles of criticism are nothing more than the various interpretations of literary activity or interpretations of literature advanced from time to time. Just simply various interpretations of literature. That is uh, simply the principles of criticism. So these principles of criticism may vary from one age to the another age. There, there is a, no fixed set of principles. Fixed set of principles uh, in this literary criticism. Okay, they may vary from time to time. They may advance from time to time. Okay, literary criticism is of um, three types. One is legislative criticism, aesthetic criticism, and descriptive criticism. There are three types of three modes, like I said. There are three modes of literary criticism. So, legislative criticism lays down rules for the art of writing based on the standard works of literature in specific of Greek and Latin works. See, uh, Matthew Arnold he proposed a touchstone method. Touchstone method is a uh, uh, a way we interpret the literary text based on where by comparing with other standard literary text that is important. Likewise, in this literary criticism, especially legislative criticism, rules may be lay, laid down for the art of writing. Art of writing analysis, the literary text based on the standard works of literature. Already there are certain classical works, we can say, the classics, we can say. Those classics which stood for the time, test of the time, and which were um, considered as everlasting, all-time you know, successful works. Those standard works may be the parameters to assess or estimate the quality of another literary text. Such, um, such assumptions are there in this legislative criticism. So, of course, and, uh, and as it is practiced in the ancient, uh, ancient time, especially classical uh, criticism period, most of the literary, most of the Greek and Latin text uh, became the standard text based on based on those standard text. Uh, we used to analyze other literary text. Uh, we used to assess uh, or estimate other literary text. So, this literary, uh, this legislative criticism examines the merits and demerits of the writer and his works. So. The large part of criticism of 18th century, 18th century in England is of this type. 18th century uh, criticism in England is this type. An estimation of literary text for its aesthetic value is called aesthetic criticism. This is the second mode or second type of literary criticism. An estimation of literary text for its aesthetic value is called aesthetic. 
Okay, in legislative criticism, we study the literary text from basic standard works and rules. But here, in this second mode of literary criticism, we are going to study the literary text for aesthetic one. Aesthetic one. Because uh, already we, uh, we know, we know uh, there are some writers who, uh, who uh, mention that art for art Artful arts. Basically, literature is also art. Okay, but among all the arts, literature is superior to all the arts. Or we can say the highest form of art is literature. And in the literature, the highest form of uh, the highest form of literature is right. This is uh, uh, what the critics and scholars uh, estimate. So, an estimation of literary text for its aesthetic value is called aesthetic criticism. This criticism traced out in the works of Philip Sidney in the Elizabethan age and uh, in the age of Dryden in the 17th century, in the works of Dryden in the 17th century and the works of Addison in the 18th century and of Westic Orbage in the early 19th century, and of Walter Peter and Oscar Wilde in the Victorian age, and I.A. Richards in the recent times. So, if we study a literary text from aesthetic perspective or for aesthetic value, that is, Aesthetic criticism. First one we discussed the legislative criticism. Now this is aesthetic criticism. The third one is descriptive criticism. So descriptive criticism is a study of individual works of their aims, matters and efforts. You students, in the previous uh, two semesters, you studied uh, the background or biographical details of the writer. Of course, based on, of course, when a writer is inspired by a, by a particular source to write a particular literary work, surely he has or he might have some uh, aims and he may follow a particular method of expression so that he may influence. Surely, we can see there is the influence of society on the writer. At the same time, the writer's influence is on the society. Okay. For example, Ramayana and Mahabharata. We can understand that how those two great Indian epics influence all the Indians, not only in Indians, even the even uh, the foreigners were also influenced by those two great epics. No doubt all the all time classic epics. No doubt. So here we can understand that though the the common man is illiterate, he can bring out some examples from Ramayana and Mahabharata. See, likewise, there may be such influence in uh, influence of the writer on the minds of the reader and that in the society he may influence. So, Descriptive criticism is a study of individual works, of their, of their aims, matters, and efforts. We may study by studying a literary work or the works of a particular author. We may study what is his aim, what is the method he used, or he executed, and what are the effects of that writer on the society or on the minds of the reader. That is important. So, 
of course, most of the English uh, literary criticism is of this kind. Uh, this nature. Sure. It is the latest of the three critical modes. Latest of the three critical modes. First one, legislative. For example, Aristotle criticism. That is Aristotle poetics. Aristotle in the in the poetics, Aristotle formulated the rules, and he laid down laid down the rules, and he uh, up to the recent times those rules were practiced. They are the all time principles to be practiced. So here, it is the latest of the three critical modes and the most popular of them. Ben Johnson's conversations with the German and the guidance prefaces are the examples of this type of criticism. Much of the English criticism is of this nature. So, dear students, I introduced three modes or three types of criticism. Legislative criticism, aesthetic criticism, and a descriptive criticism. Of course, when the critics uh, they try to formulate some ideas for the work of art, they stick to formulate of course, uh, earlier critics uh, such as earlier uh, scholars such as Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates, and other scholars of the Greek uh, or uh, that uh, Greece, they are they are not directly critics, but they are the philosophers. They are the thinkers, philosophical thinkers. See, actually, uh, Plato wrote a, a book called uh, um, Republic. In that Republic, he explained how the ideal democratic society should be. But unfortunately, he he didn't give any space in his work, the Republic, to the poet. He excluded the poet from his of course, later many critics, uh, even uh, his, uh, the first critic, uh, who um, opposed that uh, exp uh, expulsion of the uh, poet from that uh, uh, ideal society, was criticized by Aristotle, his own disciple of the print, own disciple of the print. So here, students, we should understand simply. Literary criticism is a method, method, methodical, or you have to get some training, and you should be a trained reader to criticize a literary text because a critic is an ideal reader. An ideal reader should be absolute in his judgment. That's why. So the literary criticism is a study, evaluation, and language. Of course, students, you may have doubts. Can we, when we read something, when we read something, can we understand by reading or go through, by going through that literary text? Can we come with a conclusion? Of course, surely, whatever the piece of information you may read, surely will you can come out or you can come up with a particular piece of information that is a gist we can say or the essence of that piece of information. But here, the target or the aim of literary criticism is not the coming simply with the gist. Okay. Here, the critic is expected to be an ideal judge. So, your task is to judge the literary text. Mm -hmm. Then, your task is to assess the merits and demerits of a literary work or the writer of a literary work. 
without having a particular ideology, what should be the ideal, how can you interpret, how can you judge, if you know what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad, then only you can judge something. Okay, without knowing anything, even in, a, in our society, we can witness many people in, a, in villages or in some places, uh, we can see many people may judge. The people judge. We know, we know the people judge. But without knowing any, any law, law in the sense of um, integrity, okay, without the um, oral dharma, okay, at least they should have some idea about oral dharma or integrity or moral or ethic, they can't judge. As a student, of the literary criticism, you are expected to know something how to criticize first. And what are the uh, what are the critical traditions uh, that existed in the canon of literary criticism? And um, you may you have to um, note one point that literary criticism is the literature out of literature. Literature that is produced out of the literature. Actually, uh, literary criticism has no file or has nothing to do with other readers or other um, authors and any other people. Literary criticism only means literary text and the language. So, the literary criticism may criticize the literary text and produce another literary text. Okay, that is a, a literature out of literature. The language we use in literary criticism is called meta language because we are entering, we are producing literary vocabulary on the literary, literary language. So we are using the language to interpret language also. That's why, dear students, uh, we should be very conscious to know what are the what are those literary traditions. Uh, I will introduce what are the different periods uh, and how the literary thoughts uh, change from the one century to another, or we can say one generation to another generation. Okay. See, so if the literature is expression of life in terms of truth and beauty, then we should find uh, what is the truth and what is the beauty that is expressed in the literary text and moreover that should be related to life. Okay. See, let me tell you an example, dear students. As a literary student, a literary critic, as a student of literary criticism, you should not take anything simply. You should not accept anything simply. For example, Ashoka planted trees. This is what the statement from the beginning we studied from our school age. From our schooling, we studied this statement. Uh, the, the emperor, the emperor Ashoka, planted trees. Think, dear students, uh, no man can plant the tree. Man can plant, uh, plant. Okay, a plant can be planted, and that plant may grow as tree. That is a uh, thing. Okay, Ashoka planted the. Among those trees, in the mid, in the middle of those trees, he he um that means he, he established a road for the people as they passed through that place. It became a road. For example, now here let me give another new question. Now the case is, of course, at the beginning when Ashoka Ashoka planted the plants. In the middle of those plants, there is a road. Now the plants grow now. We saw the plants both sides of the road. 
now tell me students did ashok did uh, the emperor ashoka planted the tree plant uh, the the plant or did he lay the road did he lay the road among those trees new person earlier and the beginning when there is no road there are only the trees only the plants the people can see the plants among those plants there is a road they could see but now as they grow up grow up now we can find that we uh, we can imagine that both there is a road and both sides uh, there were plants or there were trees likewise we we may see or we can have different perspectives of on a same subject or different perspectives on the same point let me tell you another another example dear students while passing on the road we saw two cars met with an accident with your creativity instead of saying that two cars met with, met with an accident you can say the two cars terribly kissed the two cars terribly kissed they terribly kissed so that no one can enter that one and in and the light that's why the students in the later lecture season we are going to interpret the statements generally when we read something we should read between the lines we should read the lines we should read between lines and we should read beyond the lines okay so between the lines beyond the lines and reading the lines these are uh three different types of reading and so if you go depth if you read something in depth then you can find something more or something new or something different sure that's why in the literary criticism we are going to know what are, what are the legislative critics what are the legislative critical texts such as uh, um aristotle poetics and uh, um na bartamanis na kesas okay not only that we can understand different uh, descriptive aspects of criticism and uh, we, we may say we may find that interpretation more important than okay that's why students remember literary criticism is a study evaluation and interpretation of literary text the literary text can be enjoyed in two ways as a layman we may read uh, casually and we may read and we may come up with some information we may enjoy but there is another case that uh, the people may read the literary text with some critical approaches critical insights the train man not like a cop lemon okay lemon in the sense unprofessional okay and uh, um, this the word uh, the uh, already i mentioned that the word and uh, literary uh, the word criticism derived from a greek word prize which means to judge the french equivalent word to this criticism is critic c r i t i q u e critic critic means criticism c r i 
acting I separate against a person who judges or who criticizes. So, criticism is the act of judging. So, literary criticism is the act of judging literary text. Of course, any form of art can be judged. So, we should after we should know the we should know the fact that there are no fixed principles of literary criticism which are applicable for all the text and all the time for all the writers to uh, criticize. So the principles of literary criticism may vary from time to time, and uh, its approach is disinterested investigation. The approach of literary criticism is disinterested investigation. It may disinterestingly investigate the literary text. That is the important thing to students. As I mentioned already, literary criticism is of three types, legislative, aesthetic and descriptive criticism. Legislative criticism is related to the uh, formulation of or uh, formulating the rules of the art of writing. That means that how, uh, how an art should be and what are the parameters that are to be uh, in that uh, work and what are the uh, um, ideas that are to be followed in that literary work. Of course, uh, there is so much of a debate or argument uh, uh, about uh, the three unities. Unity of time, unity of place and unity of action. Of course, we know that. So, in this legislative criticism, the rules may be laid down based on the standard works of literature. And uh, that means that uh, already such uh, or some literary works were considered to be the standard ones, especially uh, for this uh, Greek and Latin works. And in this legislative criticism, the merits and demerits of the writer may be assessed or estimated. So, another thing that is uh, the, an estimation of literary text for its aesthetic value is aesthetic criticism. And uh, descriptive criticism is a study of individual works, of their aims, methods, and efforts. So this is, this is uh, today's my first in my class that is introduction to literary criticism. The students, I will come come up with uh, another video in the next class uh, for uh, with the uh, uh, next class with some more uh, with uh, some more information of this literary criticism, and I will introduce what is Pythis uh, uh, Aristotle Pythis. As we have, um, I hope uh, you have to um, be thorough in reading this, uh, um, in reading the material we post in Google Classroom, and uh, even you should be uh, conscious to listen or to watch these videos and uh, know, make and uh, note down some notes uh, from these videos, and uh, remember uh, we will assess your um, learning. That's why. Um, be conscious to learn and I, I, I hope uh, you will um, go through the material carefully and you will, uh, you will answer our questions when we may um, give you in um, Google Classroom yes, students. Be, time, be attentive and respond. Your response is important to yes, students. Okay. Uh, every day when we post a particular video or a material, we may uh, ask you to respond something. We may ask you a few questions or a few, at least one or two questions uh, to know uh, whether you are actively participating in this uh, program or not. Yes, students, with this uh, I will wind up today's video, today's lecture. Thank you. I wish you happy learning. Thank you, Nanda. No, no.